Grammy award-winning singer-songwriter Michelle Williams is speaking openly about her mental health journey. The Destiny's Child band member bears it all in her new memoir titled Checking In, How Getting Real About Depression Saved My Life and Can Save Yours Too. In the book, Williams gets real about her own struggle with depression and the power that comes with checking in with yourself. In the book, rele the book release comes as the world marks Mental Health Awareness Month this May, a time dedicated to raising awareness and educating the public public about mental health. According to the CDC, mental illness is among some of the most common health conditions in the United States, and more than 50% of the population will be diagnosed with a mental illness or disorder at some point in their lifetime. So for more on her book, Checking In, Michelle Williams is joining me now. Thank you so much for joining us, Michelle. I don't know if you can see, but I got the book right here, and I've got it like this dog, you know, when you bend the page down, all throughout the book. Um, I thought it was really, really well written. And I want to start with the title, Checking In, and what it means to you, because you're not just saying sort of a surface check-in like we often do. You all right? You mean like really checking in with why you may be behaving in a certain way. Can you talk about what you meant, what you mean by checking in? Checking in, you know, well, in July of 2018, I found myself checking in to a treatment center for depression. And I remember at that time, you know, I was kind of forced to tell it that I was in the treatment center because word had got out, it was about to leak. and. I said, no, I, I've got to, I've got to say something on my own. And so I just remember feeling embarrassed and humiliated. I felt like a hypocrite at the time because, you know, this is the girl that sings when Jesus says, yes, this is the girl and, you know, talking about empowerment and in, inspiration. And I, I, I found myself in need of some help. I found myself telling people to do the same thing that I've been telling people to do for years, which is to get some help if you find yourself overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, the thing about depression is it's so misunderstood, not just by people who, who are on the outside looking in, but even people who are struggling with depression, even, you know, for you, for you, you spent a lot of time realizing now that there were periods in your life where you were depressed. And we're not talking about, you know, something went wrong in your life. And so you're feeling down, which that certainly could trigger depression. And you talk about how disappointment fuels depression, but we're talking about clinical depression. And even at the height of your sort of dreams coming true, you are with Destiny's Child, you're traveling all around the world, and you say to someone on your team, I think I'm depressed. And, and their response to you, and I'm going to read it, which is sort of typical, is, hey, you know, you say, hey, I feel depressed, and this person says, what do you have to be depressed about? You guys just signed a multi-million dollar deal. You're about to go on tour. You guys are, you're about to release your own Barbie doll. Who has their own Barbie doll? Um, can you, can we talk about how there is such a great misunderstanding about what depression really is? And I notice you also sort of go out of your way in the book, not to really define what your depression is, how, how you felt it was, because I think you recognize that depression feels differently and looks differently on different people. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, depression for me, once I realized I got the, the official diagnosis in my 30s, but it's been something I've been dealing with before the music industry. It started in the seventh grade. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And you know, it was a lot going on, on, a lot that I was witnessing. I mean, I was bullied at that time, even from the fourth grade on and just not feeling safe. But going to what you were saying is, I think people truly mean well. I don't think they're trying to be dismissive, but I think people mean well when they say, you've got so much good things going on because they think you're not seeing the good that's in your life. And I think people mean well when they say that, but I think now we have more tools and our answers and responses should be, you know what, I can only imagine how you're feeling. How can I best serve you during this time? I'll hold your hand. What do I need to help you find a therapist? Um, what can I what what can I do um, to help you in this time? 
Um, when you talk about checking in, I'm sort of flipping through the book. You talk about um, you know several times where you reacted in anger over things, and re and realized afterwards that anger was not the appropriate reaction. Uh, once you talk about a betrayal where you had hired somebody and you found out they were working for someone else, and you were really really mad, and you're speaking to a therapist about it, and she keeps digging deeper. She keeps uh, forcing you to check in deeper. And initially, you're you say, well, it made me feel mad, and then you sort of say, well, it made you feel betrayed and you felt like they were using you as a stepping stone to get somebody to somebody else and she kept on pushing you and then when it came down to it what you said was essentially and I'm paraphrasing because I can't find it right away was that you felt like you were undeserving you felt like God had forgotten about you and I thought about how anger is such an acceptable way of expressing intense emotions and vulnerability and weakness isn't. We talk about, you know, the stereotype of the angry black woman mm -hmm. and how often, because we don't check in with ourselves, we, we're not actually addressing the hurt that is being masked by anger. I, I don't, what do you think of that observation? Because that's what I got from, from your, that passage. Girl, you hit the nail on the head. <laughs> we mask how we really feel with anger. Listen, I'm not, no one will ever say Michelle was a, is an angry person. They will never say that. But when she started to pull that onion back, you know, not feeling valued, mm -hmm. not feeling seen and all of that stuff, it just took me back to things from childhood, not feeling valued, not feeling heard, not being seen. And so you almost... That's even how you even go into relationships. You'll even take crumbs because you feel like that's all you deserve. You'll let people continue to take advantage of you and betray you because you actually think you deserve it. Girl, you said something yeah, there. It, it, oh it, my it. gosh. <laughs> Girl, no, yeah, well, you said it. Girl, you said way, it. I, you're a grown woman, but if we were just no, no, that's dinner, okay. I'd be saying, girl, and high fiving you. <laughs> <laughs> No, you said it in this book, and the, and the other thing that you said, and this is very early on in the book that really sort of touched me, was you talk about your actual first name, which is uh, Tanitra, and how when you started in this industry, you were told to go by Michelle instead, and the statement to you, the question that was posed to you is, do you think little girls, or uh, who do you think little girls want to be like, a Tanisha, Tanitra? or a Michelle, mm -hmm. and you're sort of you're reinforcing what you say in this book, because you say people always spell, mispronounce your name. But they basically, you know, and, and Tanitra wanted to be in the criminal criminal justice, maybe, and was a, was a different person. And then you acknowledge that you went with Michelle out of fear, which is another sort of checking in. Um, and it, that sort of struck me, because that has kind of been my own challenge my whole life. I'll asking myself, mm -hmm. why are you making this decision? Is it out of fear, or is it for a legitimate reason? Because fear is a liar. Can you talk a little bit about kind of coming to that conclusion that fear has, has motivated you in your life in certain mm -hmm. ways that you never kind of thought about before? I never wanted to be the difficult person. I never wanted to seem like I couldn't be a team player or um, combative or, you know, I just, I just, and a part of me was like, are you really going to let a name change keep you from rocking with two young ladies that you come to really adore? And then I thought, well, mm -hmm. Michelle is a part of me. It's my middle name. It's not like they just opened up a book and picked another name, but definitely it was out of fear of, you know, confrontation. I, I didn't want, I, I, I didn't want, mm -hmm. I didn't want, I don't know. I, I just, and I still, it's something I work on today, which is being able to speak my mind and how I really, really feel. Like you say, being vulnerable when you, when you're vulnerable, you're able to tell some, that's telling somebody how you feel. I don't like the way this makes me feel. And I should have stood up. But when you're new to something, I just felt like, yeah, you just gonna have to take this one to the chin. It's not the time for mm -hmm. you to be trying to stand up right now. And I'm not yeah, saying I that totally was, that that. was right or wrong. 
No, but it is what it, I mean, even within the television industry, people will sort of give you advice that, that you really take to heart. And then maybe 10 years down the road, you think, oh, that person wasn't even anybody really to give me advice, you know, but you really don't know. And so you, you're insecure. And so you absorb everything. Um, Michelle Williams, this is a great book. Um, it, it, for people who are looking for like some dirt on Destiny's Child, you're not going to find it there. Um, what you will find is um, the story, what I also like about the book, Michelle, is this isn't kind of like this stereotype of, you know, on the surface, the successful woman who's struggling underneath with this heartbreaking story. It's the story of a real person. You come from a family that loves you and the marriage had ups and downs like many of us. You got it. You, you have gotten the opportunity to live your dream because you worked hard, but everything's not perfect. Um, it's exactly sort of the real story of a real life person. And I think a lot of women will benefit from reading this book. I really appreciate you spending time with us, Michelle Williams. Thank you. Ooh, thank you. You kept <laughs> dropping gems. Sheesh. <laughs> Everything is not Thank perfect. Thank you so much. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. mm, mm, mm. <laughs> and that is okay. There you go. Make sure you check in with yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Um, if you want to get your hands on a copy of Michelle Williams' book, Checking In, How Getting Real About Depression Saved My Life and Can Save Yours Too, it goes on sale today.